What is Buddhism? Buddhism is one of the world's major religions, which originated in India 2,500 years ago. It was founded by Siddhartha Gautama, and over the next millennia it spread across Asia and the rest of the world. Central to Buddhism is the belief that human life is a cycle of suffering and rebirth, but that if one achieves a state of enlightenment, nirvana, it is possible to escape this cycle forever. Siddhartha Gautama was the first person to reach this state of enlightenment and was, and is still today, known as the Buddha. It is interesting to note that the Buddhists do not believe in any kind of deity or god, although there are supernatural figures who can help or hinder people on the path towards enlightenment. Siddhartha Gautama was an Indian prince in the 5th century BCE who, upon seeing people poor and dying, realized that human life is suffering. He eventually renounced his wealth and spent time as a beggar, meditating and traveling but ultimately, remaining unsatisfied, settling on something called the middle way. This idea meant that neither extreme asceticism or extreme wealth were the path to enlightenment, but rather, a way of life between the two extremes. Eventually, in a state of deep meditation, he achieved enlightenment, or nirvana underneath the body tree, famously known as the Tree of Awakening. The Mahabodha Temple in Bihar, India, the site of his enlightenment, is now a major Buddhist pilgrimage site. The Buddha taught about four noble truths. The first truth is called suffering, which teaches that everyone in life is suffering in some way. The second truth is the origin of suffering. This states that all suffering comes from desire. The third truth is the cessation of suffering, and it says that it is possible to stop suffering and achieve enlightenment. The fourth truth, path to the cessation of suffering, which is about the middle way, which are the steps to achieve enlightenment. Buddhists believe in a wheel of rebirth, where souls are born again into different bodies depending on how they conducted themselves in their previous lives. This is connected to karma, which refers to how a person's good or bad actions in the past or in their past lives can impact them in the future. As we can see, the ultimate goal of Buddhism is to attain nirvana or enlightenment. And as already intimated above, this can be attained through the process of cultivating oneself, which involves the Noble Eightfold Path. Each stage of the Eightfold Path that a person has to undergo is founded on moral virtue. The Noble Eightfold Path is crucial to Buddhism as it provides the concrete path toward the attainment of enlightenment. As the name suggests, it consists of eight stages of increasing spiritual insights, namely Right view Right intention Right speech Right action Right livelihood Right effort Right mindfulness and Right concentration Normally, these are categorized into three, with the first two tend toward the cultivation of wisdom, the next three toward ethical conduct, and the last three toward the development of the mind. Right view means seeing the world as it is in itself. This is a significant step because understanding the world as it is in itself allows us to know what really life is, which in Buddhism is characterized by suffering, absurdities, and meaninglessness. And for the Buddha, right view implies the acceptance of life no matter how absurd and meaningless it may have appeared to us. If right view allows us to affirm life, right intention enables us to decide to go on with life despite the difficulties it harbors. Thus, right intention encourages us to have a positive attitude in life. The Buddha viewed right speech as an act of abstaining from thoughtless words that cause harm to others, such as lying and malicious gossip. Here, the Buddha wants us to speak with honesty, mindfulness, and loving kindness. Right action means behaving in such a way that we do not harm any living being. Right livelihood follows directly from right action in the sense that, according to the Buddha, we ought to make a living in a just and peaceful way. For this reason, 
the Buddha calls us to refrain from having livelihoods that cause harm and destruction to our community, such as dealing with weapons. Right effort has something to do with the development of wholesome qualities, such as love, kindness, wisdom, and generosity, as well as the release of unwholesome qualities, such as hatred, anger, and ignorance. Right mindfulness is the complete awareness of the moment. For the Buddha, right mindfulness is to remain focused on things that we desire without becoming attached to them. And lastly, right concentration involves the turning of the mind to focus on an object that we desire. This implies the seclusion of the mind from sensual and unskillful qualities. It is important to note that each stage in the Eightfold Path supports the next stage, that is, in the process of attaining enlightenment, the cultivation of one stage necessarily leads to the cultivation of the next, and so on. Thus, all the paths interact and support each other in the process of realizing the ultimate goal. Now, it must be emphasized that all of this is made possible through the work of morality as the foundation of the Eightfold Path. This is because in Buddhism, the cultivation of what is wholesome depends entirely on the abstention from committing evil deeds and reprehensible actions. In fact, the Buddhist scriptures reveal that a person cannot proceed to meditation without first of all acquiring moral virtues that can restrain the external expression of defilement, such as greed, hatred, and ignorance. Now, it must be noted that there are two main groups of Buddhism, namely, Mahayana Buddhism and Theravada Buddhism. Mahayana Buddhism is common in Tibet, China, Taiwan, Japan, Korea, and Mongolia. It emphasizes the role models of bodhisattvas or beings that have achieved enlightenment, but return to teach humans. Theravada Buddhism is common in Sri Lanka, Cambodia, Thailand, Laos, and Burma. It emphasizes a monastic lifestyle and meditation as the way to enlightenment. Lastly, it must be noted that Buddhism has been a controversial religion. For example, the head of the Tibetan school of Buddhism and traditional leader of Tibet, the Dalai Lama, fled from China-controlled Tibet in 1959 to India in fear of his life. Many Tibetan Buddhists actively resist Chinese control of the region. Recently, the current Dalai Lama, who is understood to be the 14th reincarnation of the first Dalai Lama, has raised questions over whether and where he will choose to reincarnate. 